if well, they didn't they have a right to listen, it's if they wanted to speak, they would have to uh, identify themselves. It being 6 p.m. on Thursday, August 6th, I'll call the meeting to order. Um, first thing on the agenda is public input. Any public input? Next, we'll move into new business. And uh, first on the agenda is some discussion about the transfer station project presentation. And I'm going to hope that everyone read the uh, file that I gave them. Um, the real question I have is, is the board interested in moving forward with looking at a recycling facility building at the transfer station property. Um, it's not going to be cheap, but hopefully we can get some of the funds through grants from the USDA, EPA, New Hampshire <coughs> DES grants. Um, there's one to about seven or eight different places to go for grants. Uh, maybe we can get equipment from one grant, building from another, engineering from another. Um, so that's that's the goal is to is to do that. Um, and I guess the simplest thing is I sent it out early enough so everybody could read it. If you've got questions or comments, now would be good so we can discuss it and make a decision on whether to move forward or not. I guess I'd just like to say that um, Willie and I went to the Guilford Transfer Station today. They have a brand new recycling facility. Um, it's pretty impressive the amount that they're saving coming out of landfill and they're making about $10,000 a month on their recyclables um, with the savings of not hauling it and getting paid for the product. Um, you do the math, $10,000 every month. We ain't going to do the numbers they're doing now. No. No. Well, I know they're, they're twice the size that we are, but still, I mean, every month from here on out. You need to have that transfer station for 40 years before you made a dollar back. Before well, you it's more than making a dollar back, as I yeah. said in the, in the thing, is you have to think of the costs that are going to increase over time as far as your tipping costs and your transportation costs. Buy your own truck. The hauling is going to start having to go to like Virginia because New Hampshire's landfills are all filling up in five years and we have a thing in our um, contract that says no new landfills and they're all going to be full in five years. Massachusetts is bringing their trash here. Connecticut's bringing their trash here. It's going to be a major problem. We're going to be hauling to New York. Pennsylvania, Virginia. The only question I have is, and I really would like to know, how long it's going to take us to get product to sell. Because if it was profitable to do it, waste management would be doing it. Well, they always did recyclable before. How long is it going to take us to get a tractor trailer load of cardboard to even be able to ship? I, tell you that. I didn't see it in here anymore. Because we're basing everything off 217 numbers. Right. No, I agree. But that was the year that it was most consistent. If you take the other years, they aren't as consistent. Um, uh, wait, the nice thing about having them bailed is that you can store them in containers. They recommended so, that you get. We, we did 44.46 tons of cardboard in 2017. That, that was, was loose two. cardboard, not compacted cardboard. That's what I'm saying. That's how many tons of cardboard. It's still going to be the same if it's failed or loose. weighs the same, failed or loose. So that would be at least two tractor trailer truck loads. But we, it took us a year. For two, so six months. Right now, we're having... About 38% of the people are, are going through the recycling line to recycle. Well, that was my other question. So wait, it was 44.6 tons for the whole year or for half a year? For a whole year. Right now, Guilford just quoted us that they're getting $125 a ton for our cardboard field. So that's 5500 bucks a year to spend a million and a half. 
Well, it's not just for one type of recyclable product. It's for what all. What else do they do over there? Recycle. They recycle um, aluminum, tin, mixed paper, cardboard, plastics, one, twos, fives, and sevens. Uh, they do a what do they call it? That mercury battery. Oh, yeah, they do. They do some uh, household uh, electronics stuff. Um, you know, the mercury batteries, batteries. They recycle they more than we do, it. but those are well, and acid batteries. Yep. I mean. You know, there's probably money in those. I there think. is. Glenn brings them to us. Yep. There he sets them aside and we go and pick them up and write yep. the time to check. Well, I mean, it, it's the long range of the whole thing. It's not looking at what it is today. Uh, well, I understand that, but the numbers reflect what you'd like to have in two years. And, I mean, no offense, I, I understand recycling, but we couldn't get a municipal building here to house $100,000 worth of equipment. And they wanted $4.5 million for that. And if people don't think that the transfer station isn't an essential service, I, keep all your trash at home. You know, I mean, that's that's where we're at. Well, and that's what I'm asking you. Is this going to mandate re everybody recycle in the town? Because you know what happened the last time they tried to put that through? It went through for a while, and then we ended up with more trash on the side of the roads, and we ended up in the transfer station. We can either go forward or we can stay stagnant and... and Keep paying the piper. We're going to pay more and more to get rid of our trash. That's the bottom line. I think when the hauling fees goes up, you're going to have to start doing pay to throw, and then you want to see the litter go up. <laughs> the pay to throw is going to be a town vote, and it will never go through. And you're, so you're just going to be paying well, people that don't care. I mean, I, I worked at the transfer station for three days, and the number of people that come in and you hear what they throw in the MSW dumpster, it's appalling. And people have got to start getting their act together. If they complain about their taxes, yeah, it's going to cost money to build this. Hopefully we could get 30 to 40 percent of it through grants. We spend how much on a fire truck every six years? How much do we spend on resurfacing the roads every year? This is an investment in our infrastructure. Either we make it or we don't. We spend 500 and some thousand on a bridge. And 600, the question is, can the town afford it at this time because of the stuff we're facing already? That, that's my only thing, because you were trying to do it in two years. I understand yep. the process. I understand that. But as you and I have discussed and we've discussed here, I don't think people are going to be able to squeeze out another dime out of their pocket this year to start another project. We, as a CIP, changed the money, we hope, Correct me if I'm wrong. The thirty-six thousand that was in there, or thirty-four thousand. It was thirty-eight thousand that was scheduled for plumbing and septic for the bathroom, which obviously we would not do, and put that into transfer station improvements. So we started with some seed money. I don't say not give it up completely, but well, I when think... When are we going to put a bathroom in down there? But what I'm saying, Willie, is I think a two-year plan is too short. I don't think people are going to be able to face it. Well, I also just want to bring up, as far as timelines go, that these grants that are available now are going to run out. Every town is aware that the landfills... They run out every year. They no, I just mean, like, they're going to run out permanently for landfills because everyone's going to be applying for them. And the thing with it is, is the select body has to apply for the grants. You guys can right. do the work, but the select body... Right. I said, I just think two years is too quick. I really do. I mean, we, even with the bridge, you're right, 650000 That was 350000 each year. And it hurts. Yeah, it's going to hurt even more in December. Well, so what do you think would be a reasonable timeline for a project like this? I would say try it over... To, I mean, again, I know nobody likes capital reserves in this town, but I would think a little bit... Over the next three, three or four years. So, so three or four we're, years. We're for three or four years, we're not going to, we're going to not have running water and a bathroom at the transfer station. Well, Willie, how long has it been since running water? I mean, that place has been built. It's supposed to be in there. I agree with you, but this plan moves everything up there around to some some other location. It puts a building down on the flat in the front. I don't. Do you even have enough room down there to put everything? Yeah. <coughs> That's just my opinion. I mean, we can take it to the townspeople, but I don't think when people get their December bills, they're going to say, 
I mean, we couldn't even get we couldn't even get 150,000 continuous municipal building, and that covers 400 and some odd thousand more than that, probably a million dollars worth of vehicles and stuff in this town that are now in buildings that may not last. But they're under buildings. You know, I think that that is part. But of they're what? They're under buildings. It's not like they're out in the rain or getting snowed on, yeah, or they have buildings that, building that they're. I just think two years is too tight a timeline. And when's our when's all our bonds up? Twenty three, right? Um, twenty twenty two and twenty twenty three. Uh, the transfer station bond is done in uh, twenty twenty three. That's the last payment. So we're you're clear in twenty twenty four. The school's done though, and the school bond is, I think, the same year. Uh, hold on, sorry. Oh boy, where am I? I school two. district. Okay, no, that's so the school district bond is done. The last payment is in 2022. Right. So the transfer station has one more payment in 2023. So the idea of that is if you at least start, I mean, we put monies in there for starting. If we put some in the budget to put in a reserve fund, then 2022 and 2023, we're gone those two bonds completely. So if we just... What, 65,000 and... Which, you, the, you want to know which... The landfill bond and the school bond. The school bonds, <coughs> well, in 2021, it's... 174,000 in 2022, it's 84,000. And the transfer station bond is, um, oh boy, uh, well, 58,000 this year, 56,000, 2020, I'm sorry, 2022 is 56,000, and 54,000 in 2023. So about $300,000. Right. So if we put a couple hundred thousand dollars in this year, plus what you've got in the CIP for improvements. Which is 30... I thought it was 36, but you said it's 36. It is 36. I'm 36, sorry. I misspoke. 36,000. It is 36,000. Yeah, that's not money we have in. That would be money. No, that, that would be, be money we'd be putting. So you're looking at $236,000 appropriation this next year to start the process for this? I think and at least you'd we be two years out before you got anything done. Well, no, right? 2022, you would. Well, I'm just. Well, we're coming up on 21. I know, but 2022, you'd have what we have for a bond payment now to go in. So it's not like you couldn't start that you wouldn't have money enough to start the project. And, <coughs> and by then, maybe who knows? People will be back to work and we'll have a. Gold rush of money falling down from the sky, and really, I'm wondering um, if we did it just. But you'd have grants by then too. You would know if you were qualifying for any grants to start with. Well, you've got to have uh, some engineering done first. No, but I should say you'd be applying for grants. So if you received those grants, the town signed off, and we received those grants, that would be additional money into what you've got right there. And that's what my point was going to be: is I believe you'd still be able to apply for the grants. You need to do some upfront work, like, soon. You can't just wait and say, well, we're going to go for grants. You've got to have something to present to that grant. Right. You can't just say, that's why the conceptual... Well, that's what I say. That would give you, if we, could, if we budget for a couple hundred thousand dollars in this year's budget, plus the 36 that's already there, that's $236,000. You can put on a grant form that says the town is committed. I don't think I'll make it past town meeting anyway, so... I, if, uh, the way the economy is right now, I don't know either. It ha is this going to have to be a ballot vote or a voice no, vote? Floor vote. Floor vote. I honestly, I think that if the people were educated about what the landfills are going to look like in four years' time. You know how many people just don't care, though? They're going to care when it's going to Virginia. They're going to care when those hauling fees are not $74. They're like $700. <laughs> they're going to care. <laughs> right now we're paying three oh six. I think it is, for every pull, every time they pick up a bucket and take it out of there. Yeah. Um, I guess that's going to be three times the amount when the landfills. Why don't we recycle plastic now? 
Uh, the feeler. Well, yeah. No, but I mean for them to pick it up. Because it's not cost effective. You can't get enough in one of those, even with the, the contractor they have. You just can't get enough weight in it to make it worth anything. It's mm -hmm. the, the hauling costs kill you. So that would be so bailed. That, That's what they do in Guilford? Yeah, they bail stuff. And it's um, amazing the amount of product that goes into a bale, especially with the plastics. Yeah. But I, I truly think if you're going to present this, you're going to have to have some better concrete numbers about what the cost return is going to be, and not just hauling fees. I mean, I look, I've been doing the waste management things for the gopher, and I just don't see the volume there. When I talk to other cities, I don't see the volume there. Cardboard's great, you can keep it, but if you got to hold on to it for three years, you're not going to get the price for your cardboard because it's going to be disintegrated even if it's in a building. Well, another interesting thing about our field trip today was that Alexandria, which is a nearby town to Guilford, was there looking to see about putting on their ballot to see if they would use Guilford's site because they don't have a baler and they don't have a facility. And Guilford is all about it because they make money on it. What happened so, to the county? The, the county. There was a group that was, you had started with a county thing and I never heard where it ended up. It's like you had one meeting. Well, I think it's, a, it's again, it, it becomes an environmental thing as well. How far are you going to transport so everybody in town here is going to drive down to Ossipy to deposit their trash down by the county home? By the time you do that, you've expended a lot more money, a lot more time. So, I mean, well, I'm thinking of trucking fees. If you had a county recycling facility and you trucked all our cardboard down to the county facility, you would have many more towns coming back in. It would still be the same buying thing. I don't trucks disagree with that. But every time you handle something, it costs you money. Well, we're not even set up for that right now. I mean, that would still take, take a change in our infrastructure. Well, we weren't set up for Aaron to come pick up stuff either, but we managed to get it done. Oh yeah, it was set up for that. I mean, the, the transfer station was set up to pick up the, the bins. Yeah. I mean, Aaron, you said that you don't think people will buy it. Why won't they buy it? Because it's money or because it's not the right thing to do? As in buy what? A, a building and a transfer station uh, recycling center. Oh, I think it's an awesome idea. I just don't think the money's there. Meaning, more or less, I think people are getting their bills now, and when they go to town meeting, they're going to shut everything down that is non-essential. They're going to keep the roads, they're going to keep the fire department, they're going to keep the police. Anything other than that, they're just they're going to say no. Better keep the tax corp. Yeah, yeah, well, that would <laughs> keep you for a little while longer, too. I would consider trash essential. Well, the thing of it is, essential versus putting food on your table because nobody's getting employed is different. And that's the, only that's the only problem with the timing of this is right now people don't have money. All benefits ended. Well, food gets off the table too. You know, you can't put anything on the table without having a whole lot of trash to take care of. It's very... I'd rather eat than worry about my trash. <laughs> But I'm saying that's my only concern with trying to present it in two years. The way the economy is right now. Well, I think changing the timeline is a reasonable thing to consider because it is a really tight time right now. But I think taking it off the table altogether, it doesn't make sense. We all know that we have trash. We all know there's a problem with trash. For us to say we're not going to think about this problem, I just think is a mistake. Well, I didn't say nothing about it. I gave a different timeline. Yeah. But you were asking for 200000 this year, then you'd need another 200000 the following year, and then the following year would be your final year, which well, would come into effect, and that would be 21, not 22, 23. Not necessarily. Well, but not necessarily. Maybe by next year, we'll have a better insight as to who has an income and who doesn't. Or we could all be six feet under by next year. I don't know what the way it's going. But I think that would be more palatable. I just don't think people are going to be able to come up with $400,000 this year to put in to start. I really don't. And like I said, this could be in addition to whatever grants. We can always, we can always accept unanticipated grants to be extended for a transfer station. Right. If, uh, I mean, I think we need to, if we're going to go that route, we need to get some money where we can hire someone to do some 
conceptual plan so that we can move forward. Right. Well, that's what I said. There's right now. There's no money in the budget for it. Right. I mean, I'm just hoping and going to try and go see if the Tama Foundation could assist us right. with that. Right. And I said we there. already changed the CIP conception from being that to transfer station improvements. So it's not specified for sewer and water. But again, that's not concrete money. That's just something that's sitting in a bin somewhere. It's not. Well, no, nothing's concrete. Right. It's on paper. It's all on paper until we get the tax, right. taxes in. Nothing's concrete. I mean, and no offense, you don't know how much it's going to cost. In, I'm going to go out on a limb here. The CARES money is going to run out. If schools have to maintain what they're talking about, opening up to the, opening up to serve children now, I can't see the school budget staying the same. I can see it going up by ten or fifteen percent, but I cannot see it staying the same. I think I, that's going to have to be addressed by a bigger. It's not bottom. going to be because they've already done that. The governor's not giving them any more PPE. They have vendors that they can go to and try and get it replaced through the CARES Act. I asked Jack Baldwin the other night. The school's CARES Act money is only eighty thousand. Ours is sixty-eight. After that, it's pretty much help yourself. <laughs> wow. Unless they come out with some more care funds, and I don't see that coming either. You're going to end up paying for it one way or another, whether you pay for it through your federal taxes or okay. your locals. But I think that's a better way to start. I know at the CIP, some people wanted to know how long we thought the turnaround time would be for um, return on your dollar for that you're investing. I, I think the town, town people would want to know As well. that, that, that turnaround time. Yes, I, mean, I, th I think, think that's, if it's a reasonable time, then you know, the environmental aspect of this will also be a, a boon for it. But they're, they're going to want to know what the return on the dollar is and how long it would take. I would, that's an important Well, honestly, it's going to depend on how well the town recycles. Right now, right. we are at one of the lowest percentages statewide on percentage of recycling. So if we got, right now, we're at like 18% is what we did when we did it the first time. I think we were up this time when we did the survey up to 36% or something I think it was like about that. 36 to 38 but the first the time we did that, it was 18% when we first did it. And so it's already gone up a little bit because we didn't do it for a while and people were excited about it and maybe people learned that there's money in it or I have no idea why there was an increase. But if that were the number were to go up, you know, most towns that recycle are in like the 80 percentage. Well, most towns have mandatory recycling. But then you save more money. So in order to be actual, you're going to have to figure it at the 36% because that's what we've got, right? So that would be the projected. Well, cost. that's what people ask. Right. They want to see if it's going to yeah. take ten years to make back the five hundred. But I'm just saying. thousand. I would really hope that if the town learned that there was actually revenue in it, that that thirty-six percent would go up to like the eighty percentile where most towns are at. The problem is, Kelly, it's like every other project that's been done in this town. We have the Chicago Village project that now wasn't supposed to cost anything. Now we've got deteriorating stairs and everything else. We've got the sewer project that everybody said was not going to cost the town, and believe it or not, it's going to cost the town before you get done. So I'm not saying that, this isn't going to cost the town. I'm not the saying, town. but that's why I say if we can space it, we'd be a little bit better off than trying to get it done in two years, I think. That's my opinion. I'm not saying not to go with it. I know the FDA grants. I read them every year and wonder why we haven't applied for a few more because nobody has the time. That's the problem. And they go quick. The best thing I think we could do is put in a set of scales because I think you find we get a lot more money out of construction debris and stuff if we were actually weighing people instead of looking at it. Not that Glenn doesn't do the best job he can, but I think if you actually weighed it, you'd find you make some more money there. Yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, and I question whether the scales are better, um, better for the money. This, this is Maureen. May I ask a question? Of course. Sure. <laughs> uh, 
Um, the figures that you've been giving of 18% and 36 or 38% recycling, are those uh, based on how many vehicles go through the recycling part of the, of the transit station, or are they based on number of families that recycle? Where, what are those figures from? My, my figures, when I say 38% recycle, that's the number of vehicles that went through the recycling line. Now, maybe some of those didn't even recycle. I don't know. And maybe some of the well, others that went in, through the regular yeah, line. All, have, have, having observed that, I think, in all honesty, to create an honest picture ourselves, we want to start with uh, facts. Um, some people recycle a bag of aluminum cans. And some people recycle cardboard and glass and metal cans and aluminum cans and everything. So um, those are not irrelevant figures and not, but, but they're just, they're not telling us if much of recycling value is based on weight or volume. Um, that's, someone down the line is going to ask us for better data than that probably. Um, well, you know, I speak as someone who's really wants this to work, but I think what I hear um, that it probably won't go through town meeting this year is is accurate, um, and I'm very very sad to say that, but I that that I do think that. Uh, so I think we need to. I personally believe that we need to think about: Do we put it to the voters? and prepare to come back next year and the next year and the next year um, until it does go through? Or do we develop a staged plan um, that might be more palatable, you know, one step at a time? It, I think the basic thing that we have to do to our residents is to convince them beyond the shadow of a doubt that the transfer station is an essential service. There is no doubt about it. So, and with that, I'll be silent. <laughs> well, but I think the other thing that has to be considered in the plan is you have to make recycling palpable. That may mean, and we've discussed this before, where are the recycling containers? You know, people that have to sort out at home and wonder where they're putting this and where they're putting that, that's another aspect of getting increased participation in recycling when people have... And we've, we've talked about that. The other thing that needs to be worked up is, that's great, this is all physical. It doesn't include anything on the labor side because you're going to have to have somebody certified in scales, you're going to have to have, I don't know if they have to be certified in the Freon and stuff removal like that. You, you just outsource it like you do now, we do now. Yeah. But what was the other thing she said they were picking up that you they call you to pick up? The batteries. Oh, one just usually brings them in. Yeah, but if you're going to recycle... Well, we're recycling our metal through him. That's recycling. So, that's my thing. You need to sort of explain that in the plan. We because if I'm it. thinking of a true recycling facility, I'm thinking of Conway that recycles everything in one-stop shop. And it goes to one-stop shop with their vendors. So... Aaron's been very gracious. And I don't think that that is how Conway works. I think they work with a lot of different people. That they haul out a lot of their they own stuff. They haul out a lot of their own stuff. That's what I mean. That's weird. Like I got three containers up there. I know you do. I know, like, shingles and stuff, that, like, stuff like that. They got their own truck, and they haul it to Rochester themselves. Mm. So I think that's what I, I understand the concept. That's stuff that's going to be looked at, but I think we need a complete package, and that's why I think it's going to take more than two years to get a complete package by the time you're talking your drawings and stuff. If you run into something down there on that flat site, that's going to be... Yeah, well, I, I mean, I'm willing to go to the, to the foundation and see if I can get a grant to do the uh, uh, conceptual design. Um, in the $11,700 category from uh, Knox. Uh, and if they turn that down, then it's up to the town whether they want to go any further or not. And you know, in March, I won't be here. You know, I'll, I'll help present something for the, for the budget, you know, for uh, 2021. But after that, it's going to be somebody else's baby. 
Well, and that's why I said, I just assume try and put some money into a capital reserve to start, and if you get any, you've got something there, we've, I, I'll, I've supported the CIP because I'm the one that said turn it into right. transfer station improvements instead of just getting rid of it, so we have the 36 there. I just, I just think it's really sad that, you know, for, that was built 20 years ago, they were promised a recycling building in five years, and they still don't have running water now. All right. You know, you're expecting your, your help to work in a situation like that. Yeah, I think the fact that the department head is compliant and doesn't, I don't think that there's other departments that would honestly be as quiet and easygoing as going has been about that. Um, well, I'm not saying he isn't, but truly, Kelly, I don't think people can come up with another 400000 especially, no offense, I don't know what that new bridge is going to cost. I know they think it's going to come in. I'm talking about the promises that the town's already made to them that they haven't fulfilled. Well, there's been a lot of promises this town's made to people. To the really, and how people. quickly do you know from this Mr. Knox that he would come back with a design? Oh, I think it would be very quickly. Yeah, it would be. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, a month or something like that. So it would be in time to put into the budget for... But then you would have drawings and plans that would be so an actual conceptual. Vision. You'd have conceptual plans yeah. to apply for grants. And yeah. I mean, I think at that point, I mean, I'm not saying vote it down, but I think it's got to go over a couple, couple more, at least one more year, other than two, because I don't think we're going to be able to come up with eight hundred thousand dollars in two years. And if it then if it leans towards that higher side of one point three, because you run into something down there, I just. I don't think we can do it in good conscience. I mean, we can work it through the budget numbers. We'll see, but I don't. Okay. Unless the economy turns around. So is the board okay with me going to the foundation for a grant? I think that's the start. I think that's the best way to go. Okay. I'll take that as consensus. And, uh, I mean, I can make a motion if you want. You can what? I can make a motion if you want to make it more official. That would be nice. Then I All right, I'll make a motion out. that we have Chairman Farming go to the Tamara Foundation to see if they're interested in uh, granting the town money to start the conceptual drawings for the transfer recycling building project. Transfer station recycling building project. I'll second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Um, Roll call vote. Street um, yes. Regular yes. Goodson, yes. Mason, yes. Burnham, yes. Unanimous decision. Okay. We'll see what the numbers bring. You'll have to bring, won't you have to bring the grant uh, application back yep. for the I'll board? Ready. Yeah. 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 Okay. Next, we have on the agenda a request from the planning board. Legal. Uh, well, thank you for. Uh, allowing me to be on the agenda and me to be here at the meeting. Um, as you probably know, we have a personal wireless service facility ordinance which has been in progress for about a year and a half or longer. Uh, we're really close to finalizing it. Um, we've uh, It's been presented to the select board initially last year. It went to the public in December of last year. That process caused us to revise it. Um, not so much adding or deleting uh, information, but just reorganizing it to make it a more logical, um, readable document. And um, I think it's a better document and so right now, it's poised and ready to go to have our a town, uh, um, well, it's an associate of uh, the town attorney. Her name is, uh, is Carrie Ann Roman, and she's initially the person who developed the ordinance for us. But we would like to have her review of all the changes we made so that we're not doing something silly or something inappropriate, illegal. Um, and so... That has been estimated from her to cost $570. And I would really like to have that money to 
to make sure that we're on track from the legal point of view and from her perspective because what we want to do is have it ready for the voters at the 2021 town meeting, which is not that far away considering we still have to give it to you folks to, to review. We still have to have a public hearing to review. And, you know, there are timelines involved once at the beginning of uh, next year to make sure that we can put it on the ballot as a Warren article. So we should do this soon. And for relatively short money, I'm hoping that we can do that and move this process forward. And you have the $570 in your budget? Yes. So you're not asking for money, you're just asking? Well, it's money that's part of our budget for the year. We had, you know, legal and, and also consulting costs that we can spend. And it's so, it's, it's, you know, I initially went to you, Willie, yep. to make sure because, you know, when, early on when the COVID started you that we... spending freeze. And you're, we were on a spending freeze. One so of the few departments is yours that has come in and asked us this for a small amount of money. Right. So I would make a motion that we go ahead and move forward with spending the $570 for legal to make sure that this ordinance is right so it doesn't cost us thousands later. I second that. Any further discussion? Well, the only thing I will say that if if it goes beyond five hundred seventy dollars for some reason, I'm willing to go to the board to make sure um, that would be acceptable to you. I suspect it wouldn't be a lot of money if that did happen. So I'm I'm just you know it was an estimated cost of five seven. Yeah. Do you know what your budget line is for legal in your until we're spent? Yeah, it's not doing well. It's, it's overspent by five hundred and fifty-eight dollars and fifty-four cents. Oh, I thought you meant in the planning board. board yeah. yeah, yeah. Is that for what legal? Yes. Uh, what about consulting? Consulting is still a thousand. So we would take it out of consulting because it's just essentially the same thing. Any further discussion, Mr. Chairman? May I don't like to interrupt a vote, but I had a comment. Sure. <clears throat> You're part of the Lake Treasure Planning Commission, correct? Correct. Now, this personal wire, uh, wireless facility ordinance should be something that all towns are looking at now because it's going to affect a wide-ranging area. Was there any any type of move to have the Lake Treasure Planning Commission help out with this ordinance and its cost so we have a consistent ordinates out the area? I don't know. Is anybody I, I'd that? have to turn that back to the planning board because I don't know what the full process has been. I know it's been over a couple of years now. Because we're struggling with this in Brookfield, too. We have to come up with one because a company has come to us and said, see your, let's see your ordinances, and we didn't have one. Okay. So we also are trying to update. So if all these towns are updating, maybe there's some way we can regionally, maybe there's some way we should have regionally tried to share that cost, but it's just a suggestion. Well, if we get this done, we can change the name to Brookfield, and we can sell it to you for half price. <coughs> okay. <laughs> you see my point. I see your point, yeah. and I agree yeah. with your point. But you. I, I can't answer the question specifically. So the planning board looked at a lot of different towns and ordinances and went to the uh, LRPC. And the bottom line is, the state was supposed to provide us with a template, and they didn't. And as it turns out, there's very few good templates out there. And I think Tamworth's potentially would act as a very good template for other other towns. If you know, once we complete this process. And once it's a public document, anybody can steal it. That's right. That's and correct. I would imagine if LRPC is aware that this is happening, then. Well. I think for the greater good, it's still a worthwhile project. Yeah. We, we, our old ordinance is so out of date, it's essentially useless. But I think in the future, I agree with, with uh, Ed, that there are a number of towns that are facing the same similar yep. ordinances, and since we're members of both the Planning Commission and other state uh, local government agencies that maybe 
everybody could get together. I, I like your plan, but everybody could get together and work on these problems as they're coming up because they're affecting more than just one town. Yeah. Of course, we don't have zoning, and so that makes our town, you know, in a unique situation as yeah. well. And they did do that with the uh, groundwater protection ordinance, but we decided not to play with everybody else. On that. Yeah. Um, so, any other comments on this? All those in favor, roll call vote. Streeter, yes. Gregory, yes. Mason, yes. Fitzen, yes. Farnham, yes. Unanimous decision. Next, I think you have something with Chicago Lake. So now I'm wearing my Chicago Lake Conservancy hat. I'm, I'm the vice president of that organization and, and also chair the uh, Lake and Property Management Committee. Um, four of us on the, on the, uh, the CLC uh, met with the uh, chief of the police, uh, Chief Littlefield, recently. And he was expressing some concerns about the general congestion, in particular the island area, the, en the entrance to the island area, some concern about um, clearance for emergency vehicles going down through that old uh, Route 16. And, um, you know, there were some obviously complaints about enforcement through stickers, you know, Tamworth stickers and things like that, but our, from the CLC point of view, um, we decided that uh, we, we've had a recent um, committee meeting and came up with a couple of ideas to improve um, the flow um, through that area and make to make it more uh, efficient and to make it safer. And uh, so the first thing we decided is that we would like to see the whole uh, area become a one-way avenue, including the entrance way. I mean, at, at this point, the entrance way is a, is a is accessible both in, for incoming and outgoing cars, but it causes some further congestion right in that area where the kiosk is. People back out and turn around, which I think is a is a safety issue. And um, so we've, we've thought that if we make the whole street from all the way from the entrance to the southern exit one way, it would, it would facilitate some of that congestion and safety and efficiency problems. And I think it would require probably four signs, official signs, Two at the southern end, which would be no entry signs, uh, one way, no entry, whatever it might be. And then two signs at the entrance, one facing the incoming traffic saying entrance only, and the other facing outgoing potential traffic saying no exit. So it became very obvious it was a one-way avenue. So I'm confused. Okay. You're talking Old Route 16, correct? Yes, the Old um, Route 16. By the bridge at, entrance. Well, there. we're talking at the island, not the Grove. I don't know Groves and Islands. Okay. I know where Old Route 16 is, and I know that the first road that goes up that was Old Route 16 says no entrance on it. Because there used to be two-way road there both ways, so that first entrance says no entrance on it. Right, and that's because the southern end already is one way. Right, says no entrance. Correct. The upper end is where you're talking about putting a no exit entrance only sign. Correct. Well, you had said, for, you had said to label the other end, and that's why I was confused. Okay, I'm sorry. Because I brought this up, because I went to Chicago Lake during the hottest season, and I don't think that's going to solve the issue of allowing rescue vehicles to go down through there. So, I think you're almost going to have to take it to parking on one side because it was so tight in there with double-sided parking all the way up to the, I guess you call it a kiosk, I call it a porta potty Well, that the, you couldn't, you, you could side. barely get a truck yeah. down through there because we had to fold our mirrors in to get down through there. Well, um, Chief Littlefield suggested a, some more signage to encourage emergency vehicle clearance. And the idea is 
shortly after the kiosk, which is just, just as you enter the island area, mm -hmm. to have two sawhorses, one on the left, one on the right, with a, enough clearance to allow for an emergency vehicle. A sign on each one with an arrow pointing on one side saying, uh, park far right, park far left, uh, emergency vehicle clearance required. And the sawhorses would give give the you know the proper clearance and the idea that this is okay. I, that wasn't here. So yeah, that no, that's no, that's something that the CLC, it being a mobile thing and not a permanent sign. I think the CLC could adopt that as our project and not have okay. that, okay. not involve the town in that. Well, that's all I had questions. Because I don't think the entrance, because when I went by the other day, there's a welcome yeah. sign out there. So that was a suggestion by uh, Chief of Police, and, and I think it's a good one because it's not a sign on the tree. It would be highly visible. It would be a graphic, uh, you know, example of what they're looking for for clearance and to get people to park hard left, hard right. There's plenty of clearance for parking in emergency vehicle down that road, except for maybe at the very end where it does narrow. Mm -hmm. But I think we need the parking spaces. We really should try to maintain parking on both sides. I think it's very doable. I think it's important to do that because we don't want to discourage people from parking. We need as many parking spaces as we can because if we don't have enough parking spaces, they're going to park somewhere else, which is going to be worse. So that was our idea, to make, to make it one way and then to add a little bit more information to make sure that they're parking on both sides very close to the edges of, of, of old Route 16. It, the, the second request is... Before you go on to your second Sure, fine. With that in hand, what is your expectation that the town of Tamworth will do? The, the town as the road agent the town. Okay, well... Um, you spoke of four signs. Four signs. <coughs> two at the southern end, encouraging no entry, and okay. two at the main entrance, which is, you know, halfway up the, the lake. One, in, you know, one noting the entrance only, and then the other... Um, Facing potential outgoing traffic, saying not not in, no exit. One on each side of that. One on each side of the main entrance. One sided signs facing appropriately. Correct. We really need six signs and four posts. No. Well, I think we only need four <laughs> signs, unless so we, we want to. We only need three. Entrance. Or are you going to put two signs up that say entrance? Are you going to put two signs up that say not an exit? You know people can't read one side of the road. Well, the incoming traffic would have one sign saying entrance only, so they know it's only an entrance. And then the other side would be facing the lake saying no, no exit to discourage anybody from turning around and trying to exit through that main entrance. So that's just two okay, signs in my... People sometimes need, you know, two signs, do not enter. Yeah. That, that's all. That's well, I'm, I'm, we're willing to work with you on what you think is best. Um, I mean, we can try it with one, I, you know, the one sign. I mean, the trouble is, is that sign that says entrance, how are you going to read that going by... The, you know, here's your, your sign that says entrance, and the road's going like this. How are they going to see that? They right. need to turn this way so that they see it says entrance, and you're coming down the road to them. You put it parallel to the road, they're not going to see it until they're right, almost there. And turning. And turning. But well, they use that as an entrance anyway. I've never, I haven't seen anybody use the south entrance for Eons. I mean, well, just because there's a sign that says no entrance doesn't mean they can't. But the problem is going to be educating people who go in there, enjoy themselves, try to pull a turn around, back around, back around, back around, and try and get back out on 16 that way. 
it would make more sense to me, I hate to say, is to put, you know, the entrance sign on 16 that shows the arrow that this is the entrance. And then on the back side, on the back side where you're saying no exit, put a sign that says exit that shoots them down the Route 16 well, side. Well, that would be that would be fine. Or a, a one-way sign. Right, one-way yeah, sign. So there, there already is a one-way sign. I think, um, well. but we could move that to make it more visible as as they are about to move, you know, down down the road. Um, so what you'd like is to meet with a road agent to install signs. That would be great. I, I think the CLC, I, I would hate to see money being the problem. I, I think that CLC might be open to um, helping out uh, with the cost. I can't guarantee that, but um, we, we would really like to see uh, improvements in, in, in the flow there. Right. And, and just you know, I can bring that up to the board. What the expectation was so we could move it forward instead of just sit here and say, yeah, well, that sounds great, and then nothing yeah. happened. Well, we would work with Richard Roberts yeah. very gladly to do yeah. that. Can I ask a question? Why doesn't the CLC buy the signs? Why does the town buy them? It is a town road. It is a town road. That is a town road? Yes. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> It's all Route 16. Yep. Well, I know, but that's why I, I you know, have to go back through history and find out then how come all that junk got dumped on it because it used to be all Route 16 all the way down through. What do you mean all the yeah, sand, the sand, the brush, and everything that used because that's one thing that caused a lot of congestion is you had a much larger area where people pulled in there and parked. So now you've scrunched all of them into a very tiny area, and again, novel year that natural resources that have never been visited by people before are now becoming popular visitation areas. So, but that's another thing. So, you're going to work with Richard Roberts? We, we would be very happy to work with Richard Roberts. Good. So we'll, we'll Depending work. on what his sign budget looks like. Well, you're right. I mean, you know, maybe he's got a post and you've got a sign. But you did say that you might be willing to work with him. Yeah, I think, I think we would be willing to work with him yep. on any level that we can help out with. I mean, does the board agree that there should be better signage there? Yeah. Yes. I agree. I agree. Okay. So let's make a motion. The, um, okay, and then you're going to do the Well, do you want to make a motion on that line. part of it? I, I just wanted to sort of concise, you know, get that into a box so we know what we were dealing with. Okay. So. so you want the motion made all together? Yeah, we can do it all together. All right. So your next one. Sorry. So the second part of it is um, to increase public parking. Um, we basically believe that if if you restrict parking in one area, that it's going to squeeze out in some other less less desirable area. So we want to try to maximize the public parking that we have there. And to do that, um, we would like to see the demarcation between the public parking as you come into the entrance and then turn left south along Route 16 which is public area, and take the Tamworth residence only with sticker sign and move that further south so that we increase the public parking at the cost uh, uh, by diminishing the Tamworth residence parking. Or you'd be moving it north? No, 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 the, the, the demarcation would move south. So the public parking would increase and the Tamworth residence parking would decrease but still be in that southern lot. Yeah, so the Tamworth parking is obviously at the very southern end, or it's at the southern end, and it, it's, it's quite a lot of parking space there. It's, it's, a, it's a fairly long area that's hardly ever under pressure for parking from Tamworth residents. And I, I think we can afford to increase the public and decrease the Tamworth residents very aptly because the ta there's... The Tamworth residence area is very ample for parking. So then it would only be that other lot that you enter at the other way? Is that what you're saying? So the, the, the lot as you enter, is, that whole area in the main entrance is all public parking. So we're not talking about that. That's, that's staying the same. No, but she's saying is okay. the Tamworth sticker only 
adequate for Tamworth residents? And the answer is no, because as you know, you've had complaints up there. We've had complaints that people aren't there. Yeah. There's yeah. Right. On the road. This but, is the northern end, though. Yeah. But that, yeah. There's but a Tamworth was, end in the <coughs> middle parking down along the island. Right. There's also a Tamworth section there. That Correct. So there's, but a lot That's of people don't realize that, to be honest with you, in this town. Which one are we talking about? And my about? only concern right. about that is if you go to walk down, and I will tell you why there's not a lot of usage on it is the farther you get towards the south for the Tamworth residents, the deeper the water is. So you're either putting in a canoe or something because you can't go out and stand in that water because it's a big drop off. Whereas the closer right after the kiosk or porta potty or whatever we're calling it, you can walk down to that water very easily. The farther south you go, the more difficult it is to access the lake. The nicer beaches are right near the kiosk. They have been mulched and they're, you know. Well, even the Tamar side near that side, the Tamar parking, yeah. there are walkways down to the lake. When you get closer to the right. exit side, the exit on South 16, that's not easy for people to get into. Well, there's multiple accesses there. Um, when, first of all, we're not talking about the very northern uh, Sandy Beach area, that which is stay all Tamworth time. residents only. We're not talking about that at all. Okay. It's it's the main entrance entrance midway up the lake, yep. where the kiosk is, where we've done the sled dog races. That that's the area that you know we're talking about. That's public. And you're parking. not talking about the northern side of it. You're talking about the southern side further yeah. down. The so old as you street. go into the main entrance, turn left. It's a one way at this point. Mm -hmm. And it's public parking for a, 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 a little while. Maybe a third of that or half of that is might be it might be public parking. Well, I'd like to see the demarcation move south, maybe a couple hundred feet. I don't know, two or three hundred feet, yeah. um, so that you know we we have more public parking. I think it's important to do that. <clears throat> There's a lot of stress on all the lake areas and river areas and the whole upper valley and the you know trailheads are feeling the pressure. It's a big problem. It's not going to go away. And so I think if to, to maximize parking, public parking is a good idea. And that southern entrance, the southern area of old Route 16 doesn't have a lot of... Um, pressure on the parking. The residence only area is plenty ample in my opinion and it can be diminished without sacrificing Tamworth residents access. I just have a really hard time taking away any access Tamworth residents have to a body of water because that's our only body of water Tamworth residents have. I didn't know there was a section down there. Only after you go through the kiosk and I only saw it a couple years ago because there's signs on the trees that says Tamworth tree. resident parking. But I don't think most residents, but as I said, I looked the other day purposely going down through, and I know the farther south you get on the Tamworth resident only parking on that southern lane, the harder it is to access the lake. The closer oh, no. out. Uh, Shelby, Shelby, can I ask a couple of words just a little perspective? This is Alex Moot. Um, I work for Shelby on the CLC. Um, the old Route old 16 from the, island, from the island area down south, was open to the, to the public. There was no camera restricted parking um, from the 1960s through 2005, roughly. Um, the CLC went to the selectmen in, I think, roughly 2005. Dave Farley was um, really the lead on this. There, there were problems, um, mostly off-season, with um, visitors using the woods for conduct that, I guess, some people are comfortable with. Um, I think you may guess what I'm saying. And so the CLC went to the selectmen at that time to try to um, keep visitors off season from using the woods um, for illicit purposes. Um, and the solution to that at the time was to restrict the southern end of that that was less visible to the police to Tamworth residents only. Um, that was when that started. So I guess essentially what the CLC is doing now, we're coming back to you 15, 15 years later and asking to reverse some of that. We'd like to keep a little bit of the Tamworth residence parking at the end, 
but broaden the public, because right now what's happening with the public parking is the public um, who are following the rules um, do not park at the end, whereas town residents only, and as a result, they're overflowing onto the side of Route 16, they're, over, they're crowding the entrance area where the, where the kiosk is. So um, I think we are trying to work with Chief, Chief Littlefield to enforce better the uh, Tamworth Park uh, residence area at the north, the Sandy Beach area that Sheldon referenced, uh, the far north, um, which is a beautiful, probably the nicest beach in all of Chicago. Um, I, I do think that the Chief perhaps may need some support from the selectmen. Right now he, can, he and his staff can ask people to move, but he, did, he doesn't ticket. Um, and maybe ticketing or towing might make that place less crowded. Right now, this summer, it has been overrun with non-residents using that area, and we've received a lot of complaints from Tamworth residents that they can't park there. Um, I think if we can, if the chief can enforce that parking better, then there will be less need for parking elsewhere. So I just want to give perspective that the older all all scheme was, until 15 years ago, entirely open to the public. Um, we're trying to get push it back that, little, that direction a little bit because the off-season problems aren't happening anymore. Thank you. I also would make the point that, um, I mean, Tamworth residents can park anywhere. Right. right. So, you know, it, and plus, for the most part, they've got all week days to enjoy the place with less pressure. And, of course, on weekends, you know, yeah, they're probably going to have to go to the Tamworth residents-only area just because it's going to be busier. But they do have access to park anywhere they want to enjoy the lake. I was wondering, um, I just was having another conversation about um, parking issues, and I, the conversation that I was having got into um, carrying capacity, human carrying capacity of the land, and I'm just wondering if the CLC is looking at that at all with the increased traffic, if the lake is seeing too much human activity. Um, it can increase bacteria, and... I'm just wondering if we want to encourage more usage. Well, you know, the CLC has taken a lot of responsibility for the shoreline and its protection. Uh, every year we spread wood chips. We um, try to encourage people to use the, the, the areas that are already being used so that we're not getting broader trampling. Yep. A long-range run, long range plan would be to put in some hardened canoe access uh, areas, at, both at the Grove and at the island, so that there wouldn't be a lot of traffic trampling the whole area. Yeah. So we've done our best. But, yeah, I just know, wanted to know if people are looking at that. We, we have a mission statement to allow for public access. I think it's really an important part of what we do. Yeah. There's a lot of people who don't have good lake uh, access and to have them be able to drive up our way and to enjoy the lake is, you know, that's part of what we like to see in many ways. We don't like to see overuse, we don't like to see abuse, but it is public uh, lands for us, you know, access. So I'm happy to well, take I, on any I more was questions. On the board when it got changed to camera parking only. And as Sheldon said, it was because of stuff that was going on, or Alex said, there was stuff going on there that just was best if it was Tampa parking only. Um, and I don't see a problem with extending that down 200 feet. I think, you know, because anybody can park anywhere there. I mean, Tampa residents can park right there if they want. You know, they don't have to go to the Tampa resident only space. Well, on the weekends, you can't get in there. Right. Well... But, Willie, right. what I'm saying, I mean, you guys can do, I'm going to vote against it because I don't think Tamworth should be giving up anymore. I remember when that lake was opened up. I was here in the <coughs> 60s. I also don't think the behavior has disappeared as much as you think you have. Ver it has versus actually being discovered. Because there's many a night, late at night, when you go down through there, that there are cars down through there and stuff. So... I just don't think Tamworth should give up any more of their space that they're allowed to access lakes as it is. And if, no offense, if things continue, nobody's getting in to the other lake that most Tamworth residents frequent. 
Which is why I wanted to separate the commitments. Okay, we can do them in two, two motions. Um, any other discussion? Anything else? Um, okay, first I'll make a motion that we ask Richard to work with the Chicago Lake CLC. You want CLC, to thank you. I was just trying to get it right. Uh, work with the CLC in posting uh, traffic directional signs on old Route 16 by Chicago Lake. Uh, it's another official name and I can't think of it. To make it a, to a one-way street. All one-way. All one-way. All, all one-way, right. I'll second that. Any further discussion on that point? Roll call vote. Serena, yes. Gates, 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 Moving, let me rephrase this so I try and get it right. Moving the additional uh, parking for Tamworth residents with Tamworth residents stickers only 200 feet south of where it now exists. Approximately, Approximately 200, 200 feet. Well, yeah. So we're okay. changing it from what they this originally says, requested, which is 100. 100. Yeah, I, I, that is, that's my cars. mistake. I, <clears throat> you wanted it to be 200 feet. I would prefer it to be 200 approximately. It, it, divided by... Cars that are eighteen feet. It's eleven cars. So on both sides. 22. So, so it would be a roughly a twenty-two car addition to public parking. Did I make that in the motion? Did you complete your motion? I, okay. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Well, I didn't hear a second or anything. I didn't know if I. I wasn't sure it was done. I make a motion that we. <laughs> Ex move the Tamworth resident only parking 200 feet approximately south of where it now exists on Old Route 16. I'll second it. Okay. Further discussion? So it's reducing it's not along with moving it south. It's reducing, <coughs> reducing, reducing the Tamworth parking. The Tamworth parking would be Tamworth only parking would be reduced, but Tamworth people could park anywhere they want anyway. Right. <laughs> they don't need the sticker. They don't need a They can park anywhere in the, the whole The sticker would not room. be needed for 200 feet further south. Correct. And we got a second. Any other discussion? All those in favor, signify by roll call vote. I'm going to say no. Record yes. You said no. That's a yes. Yes. Passes three to two. problem? I really thank you for allowing both the planning board and the Chicago Lake Conservancy to uh, be here tonight, and I appreciate your uh, your approved motion. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for that. I'll be I see a lot of prices, and these are the cheapest prices for taking your Freon out of your air conditioners, freezers, uh, refrigerators, 
Um, your propane out of your propane tanks that have to be emptied before they come to me. Um, helium, and looking at all these prices, they seem to be cheaper than what we're paying now. And talking with Glenn, Glenn did call North Coast Services, the town of New Durham, the town of New Boston that he's doing work now at, and they couldn't say anything bad about him. They said he was great. You call him, he shows up. He shows up when you call him or what time he says he's going to be there. Does, and, it, does this mean we'd be able to take larger propane tanks to the... Yeah, if he... right now we're, he's only accepting, what, the small ones? Technically. <coughs> Technically. Wow. But, I mean, that would allow us a little bit... I mean, does he accept helium tanks now? I don't know that we do, do we? Do we? And to be honest with you, well... Well, but this, yep. but this will allow, <laughs> this would allow us to get it done cheaper, quicker, and yes. take more in. With a lot of the, yeah. One of the things I um, think with the company we have now doing it is he takes the compressor units. He takes those out, which are the heaviest weight. The heaviest weight. So and you're losing. The most recyclable you, product. Yeah. Right, you're losing money out of there. He takes uh, um, the radiators. The aluminum copper radiators out of the air conditioners, so you're losing there. Yeah. This guy's just coming, taking the stuff, not taking anything out of them, just taking the bad environmental stuff and gone. And so then you'll give us more for the, yeah. Yeah, so it's a win win on. So has Glenn started to use them or is he? No, he wanted, our he, he wanted the board to talk about it before he did anything. And I think his comment was he'd like to try. Yeah, he said he wants to give him a run. If it works out, it works out. If it don't, he's just never going to call him again. Right. So like we don't need a contract or anything. We're just going to give him a call, have him come up, see how it works yep. out. If it works out, right. eventually I'll just switch over. Does the board have any other questions about this? Do we have a name? D &L. Uh, D &L DNL Disposal LLC. <laughs> I don't have an address, but I have that as a name. Yeah. And he'll provide us with insurance forms like everybody else, all the other contractors do. He'll provide us with copies of his liability insurance like every other kind. I'll call Glenn tomorrow and tell him this was a go. Just make sure he sends us his insurance before okay. he comes up. And his W-9. And his W-9. That would be fun. And is there a question on the environmental record of where this stuff goes? I would... I don't. That could be asked for too. Where is he disposing of his environmental stuff? Because he's doing it for six bucks and goes down the road and just dumps it off. And so the river. Yeah, I don't know. I can't tell you where any transfer station brings that stuff. I don't know. I know where they take okay. it. I don't know where our vendor now takes it. I'm just looking down the road so we don't come back and have a Yeah, I will, I'll ask one and I'll have an answer for that. Fine, right. So they can sell it. So that's why it's less likely to end up. A lot, yeah, a lot, of, off. A lot of times they'll sell, if they have a big enough tank to store the, the propane, they'll sell that back. Right. And the Freon. The Freon they can sell back if it too. I thought the Freon they could reuse it. In units that were still the old units. I believe they can, but I think you still maybe have to have a chain of custody with it. I don't know. I bet you do. So anyway, if, if that's your I mean, if he's used to doing it like the other vendor was, you must have the paperwork that's required. Right. Yeah, he well, probably can just say what he was doing. Yeah. If he doesn't, then maybe we'd better ask why. The other, well, and we probably maybe should ask, ask the other guy, too. One. Yeah, maybe <laughs> we want to ask our current one, too, where his stuff is. If you get him, sir. Yeah, that chain of custody becomes important with special waste. Yeah. Well, it does even with your household waste. Right. If we're taking stuff to uh, turnkey, and we deposit it in turnkey, and all of a sudden turnkey has a problem with waste. We have a percentage we own of that. Mm-hmm. So, there you go. But then you want money. So, um, do we want a motion on this? I'll make a motion that uh, we authorize Glenn to go ahead and uh, give D&L Disposal LLC 
uh, opportunity to uh, recover freon, propane tanks, propane, and uh, helium tanks, etc. Second. Per their fee schedule. Any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by aye. Street, yes. We're good, yes. Nathan, yes. Yeah. yes. Farnham, aye. Unanimous vote. on here because I was informed after we had already set everything up that the school board had moved their meeting from August 20th to August 13th. So I didn't know if we wanted to try and be put on their agenda August 13th. They are going to be voting on their reopening uh, plan on that date as well. Um, the chairman of the school board said he had no problem with putting us on the agenda for that date, but it's a totally different, and we need to decide so that all of our meeting dates can be changed around. So that would move us to meeting on the 12th if we wanted to keep the week. The 13th, we would go to the school board meeting, and then the 20th, we'd, we'd put the 20th back as our regular Thursday meeting. <coughs> what time is the school board meeting, Becky? I believe it's 5. Off the top of my head, I think it's five. I think they're starting at five tonight. What did they move it to? 13th. They moved it to the 13th. So, so that we would meet on the Our 12th. meeting would be. So we would meet the 12th. The 12th. At six. At well, six. That's what we were doing. Huh? Isn't that what we were doing? No, they no we were meeting on the 19th. And the 20th. Oh. That's why they moved it up a week. Okay. Um. If somebody could set up the Zoom, I'll join you by Zoom, but I've got a dentist appointment I've been trying to get for several months. It's on the 12th, so I can't make the meeting up here, but I could join you via Zoom. Okay. Um, I can do that. Do we have somebody here that can set that up? The school starts at 5. Well, they're having another public input session and listening session tonight. So whatever they gather tonight, the plan is going to be voted on for approval by the board, is my understanding, on the 13th. There's right. I'm just wondering, you know, if we met there at 5, can we, we come here? And then come here and have a meeting. I guess it depends on how long you want to meet with them. I don't know what their schedule is. I don't know what their agenda is. I mean, yeah. are we only the I was asked if we were going for the reopening. I said, no, we were going for finance. We would wanted to discuss financial issues with them, so. So would we be on their agenda during the public comments section, or are they putting us on the agenda as the The chairman people, said he would put that. us on the agenda. Okay. I didn't give him a reason yet, because I didn't know if we were even yeah, going. Yeah, I just wasn't sure if we would change. So yeah. I don't know how their agenda works. Yeah, well, I'm just wondering, you know, how long it would take us if we were on the agenda to talk about finances if we'd be there half an hour. Well, that's what I'm saying. I suppose I could ask him if he could put us on right at 5, and then we could come back here at 6 and start our meeting. Or oh. 6.30. And then we no, go ahead and meet on the 12th, 12th if you wish. But, I mean, I can join you. No, no, I, 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 I was just trying to think of instead of if being on two nights, one no night. one. I mean, I have no problem asking right. him that, but I won't know before next week. That's the only problem. And it is next week. That's right. Yeah. I mean, we can plan it that way. I can ask him to put us on his agenda at 5, and we can be back here and start at 6. I would, even if... We can do I that. I can ask him. Now, ain't it? What's that? So it's hard to do the agenda, because then you try to get that done for us. Oh, it doesn't matter to me. Oh, okay. I mean, all that matters is that it means that we will be only out one night for the town, most people. <laughs> or of us have other meetings to go through that week. But, I mean, I think, I don't know, I haven't pulled it up, but I think their meeting starts at 5. Sort of hard to find their meetings. I just see if they meet, if they meet with us first, right at 5. Yeah, the only thing is, is if their meeting starts at 6. I don't right. think it does. For some reason, I want to say it starts at 5. But without my computer here, I can't tell you. Yes, I use number. 13. Because 
they were in the three calendars of meetings. So I think right. if you type in search and say board oh, meetings. School board calendar, I found it. 5.30. So they start at 5.30. So if we get right on their agenda, we could start at 6.30 if you right. have yeah. an objection to that. Yeah. All right, I will ask. Yeah, let's, let's try that. I think that. Okay. So we'll stick with Thursday. We'll ask them to put us first on their agenda. So the 12th yeah, is out. Yeah. And then I will change the 19th meeting back to the 20th and get rid of the school board meeting on the 20th for public noticing. And that takes place at the school? Yep. So we're back to our old schedule of 13 and 20. Yep. yep. So we're starting on the 13th at 630. 630 instead of 6. So I don't know that a lot of people will want to meet with us if we're starting that late. Because I know you had mentioned with the auditors and stuff. So I don't know if they want to go that I've late I've already or pushed them to the 27th. Okay. Once there was some uncertainty on the date, I figured I'd better go with a certain date, so I put them on the 27th. All right, I will email the school board chair and ask him to put us first on the agenda <coughs> for fin finance. Am I correct? Yeah, I mean, I'd okay. be curious to know how things are going for them and what their expectation are, is. I know they won't have anything set, you know, at this point, but they might have an idea. Do you think at that time we would also be able to ask them if what they're doing about their contract coming up or anything like that or no I wouldn't no I mean I ask them every year at the annual meeting and they say yeah we're looking into it <laughs> so that ends for how many years now? well the contract's coming up in what two three years right but you're gonna give notice three or four years before well, you plan on exiting and you know, And only one contract's coming up in two years and that's the tuition contract, the maintenance contract. I'm not sure how that was written on that new building. Because <coughs> that's a separate thing. Okay. Thank you All for, right. so thank we'll you for that. that scheduling on that. Uh, next on the agenda under new business is <coughs> welfare guidelines, review and approval. Uh, I presume everyone saw those guidelines. Uh, Documents. I noticed that some of the fees actually are the uh, amounts the went for, down. Actually, I'm for sorry. Uh, more fee, more fees went down than went up. The only one that actually went up is the household members for four month for food and personnel are the only is the only one that went up. Everything else dropped. Yeah. Which is interesting in the times we're in that they dropped the numbers. But yeah. And this was given to us by the welfare director. Correct. Yes. She, she ran the numbers, she explained her methodology. Yep. Um, I could read it if you wanted. But no, I, I read the, her. I did stuff. too. Uh, I make a motion that we approve the new welfare guidelines as written. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, roll call vote. Street, yes. Berg, yes. Mason, yes. Goodson, yes. Burnham, yes. Unanimous decision. Next, we have the 10-year LRPC road plan request. My request is that they fix the underpinning on 113A. I know they're not going to do it, but that's my request. <laughs> uh, Tamworth has two projects on the reserve list that you could ask to have pushed up. They're priorities three and five on the list. Um, I don't know if there's anything else that you're interested in moving. I did, I did print out uh, here on the, here on the So, um, yeah, it's double-sided. It says which is three and which is five. Um, those are the two that you probably have the best chance of getting moved up. Uh, and I don't know of any new project that would get added on, but those are the, the two that are on the reserve list. I'm yet to figure out what they're doing in West Ossipi. Because until they get back, well, I'm looking, this one says real line intersection, left turn lane on New Hampshire northbound and southbound. 
man, there's no roads there as it is now. I mean, yeah, there's sense. no land or roads. Well, that's what I'm wondering is how they're going to... I think they're trying to realign those so they come to a square. Oh, the deeper road is good. I think it's the other side that's the problem. Uh, yeah. And, and my guess is they're going to shrink it down for one thing. Well, I think I wish they put a turn out by Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> I think we should just trigger them and bring money into the state, to be honest with you. Oh. You'd be surprised in the morning how cars back right up onto 16. It's every day. <laughs> on a Saturday morning, there'll be 15 cars on 16 waiting to get into Dunkin' Donuts. Yeah. yeah. They need coffee that bad? They should have couldn't imagine sitting in line home. for an hour for a coffee. Uh, well, I know. when you don't have anything to do and you're sequestered in your home. Uh, so that's my only concern is I have no idea... My only other concern is that divot we have in the snowmobile trail that goes across 16 in the Tamara side because that's getting quite the divot. These people from speeding. Speed bump. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but the problem is it doesn't. Unless you can figure unless you can figure out a project that we can put in place so I can get out on 16 on a Saturday, Sunday Sunday between 11 and 9. Yeah. What? Uh, you know, we wanted to put a roundabout in. Well, I don't understand why they're putting a turning lane heading northbound on 41. Because when we went down to, I don't know so if anyone remembers this or not, but when we went down, when we went down to Osby and they were discussing these projects in the West Osby project, they wanted to put a turning lane southbound onto 25. So you got four lanes coming to two anyway, and then they're going to broaden it back out to a turning lane going on to 25. That one maybe makes sense. But for some reason, coming northbound, they want to put a turning lane, a right-hand turning lane to turn on to 41. I don't see a lot of people trying to get on to 41 off of 16 having much trouble. I do well, see people coming... north, why would you? I well, mean, that's my point. Yeah. People trying to get across to go southbound, right. now there's a big yeah. problem, but... If it's on your side of the road... Because that's what the original design was. Because we all questioned why the turning lane 41... It's not like there's traffic backed up or anything. realigning it so that there'll be a center turning lane... Uh, no. ...as you're coming south? No. Turning right onto 41 where it's located now. Only taking out half the pizza parlor's front yard and septic system and all so that to put a turning lane in. sitting in an office. Huh? So it sounded good sitting in someone's office. Yeah, it doesn't make sense if it's the same side. I'm not terribly worried about either of these. Neither so, am I. You know, um, if okay, they want to go ahead and do uh, priority five, go for it. <laughs> okay. I, mean, you know, I don't know the state's going yeah, to money to do anything anyway. I don't think either of those are the biggest problems in town. So. No, I mean, if you, if you have any other projects on state roads that you think are more important than those two that you'd like to push, that's, yeah, this no. is the time to do it. Well, I would really love them to look at Chinook Trail so that I can drive on it in the springtime. Well, that's what I was saying. <laughs> right. Yeah, right. use it the underpinning on the machine. Yeah. Yeah. Which they'll, they'll resurface it with another two inches after it gets rocked, and then it'll last all summer, and then it'll go right back to the trash. Yeah, the will hit it, and... Yeah, I mean, fix the well, no offense, the stuff they're using now doesn't even seem to last the summer. <laughs> well, they don't even put culverts where they need them, so the frost is going to go right in there. Well, the last year it was bad. Bad. It was awful. Well, you can go steal some off of the 41, uh, the 16 thing. I think they put enough down and through there to... Next. Next. Uh, per diem transfer station job description. I sent this out because it was my understanding we hired a per diem transfer station attendant and we didn't have a job description, we had a part time. So the per diem one just states that it's per diem and then under the, I sent it out to everybody, yep. under the job portion it just says this means that you will be used as a as needed basis. Yep. Just so we're all... Yep. And we took highway out everywhere that highway occurred. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Um, make a motion that we approve the per diem transfer station job description. Second. <coughs> Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Dorita, no. yes. Ricker, yes. Mason, yes. Gutson, yes. Bottom, yes. Passage, yes. Review of the investment policy. 
Um, basically, the um, the current policy is a, a good list on the front of policies the town has with the dates. Uh, what was done here with the investment policy is you're supposed to review it. Uh, basically, the only changes that uh, are in here are the dates and where it's stored. And there a name in there that it needed to come out? Yeah, I think there was a uh, change the board of selectmen, change the dates. Uh, it, it appears that uh, there haven't been enough changes in the law or in practice to need to change anything else. So I think wasn't our old treasurer listed in there? Uh, if I, I don't remember taking that one out, so I may have missed it. <laughs> did it have a name in there? I think it did. But I think maybe, I, maybe I was reading something else. I was going to say, did you send that actually out? I thought I sent it out. I didn't get it. I didn't see it. Uh, well, I'll send it out for next next week then. Well, that's fine. I have no problem with it, but my only suggestion is instead of putting treasurer's names in, why don't we just say the town treasurer? Then you don't have to change it. It's how it reads. I agree, but there was something in there. Maybe it was that was when it was last done. It was what the last. Maybe it, well. I may have missed it. Um, when I was looking through, I didn't see any real reason to make any changes other than that you had reviewed it, which would then trigger all the dates. But if uh, some of you didn't get it, uh, let me send it out. We'll put it on next week's agenda. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. So this will be a first read, and then we'll do it yeah. next week. Yeah. Um. And I'll print a copy for signature next week, uh, rather than the one that shows the changes that I made. You can keep that out. We have here next on the list is review of properties going to tax. My question about that, I think, I think that, that has to go under C. I think C. that's going to be in a non-public session. Right, because of that. But I just put it on there so we made sure we had yep. it, but I believe that's going to be right. Yeah, there's at least safe. two that need to be in non-public. The others may not have to be. Yeah. Because um, things could change between now and now. Um, Administrator's update. The, I got a call from the uh, agency that handles fuel assistance, and they wanted to know if they have to go get signatures this year to get on the warrant. I think it's a good question to consider. I think in the past you've made them made a number of groups do petition warrant articles to be on the warrant, and they're saying with COVID it's getting more difficult to uh, to go get signatures. So it's a it's a broader question than just affects them, but um, it, are you willing to put those agencies that were on in 2020 on again in 2021 without signatures, or do you want everybody to get signatures? Is that a legal thing? I think we got to get that played with the Secretary of State, because yeah. I know the Libertarian Party just had a whole oh. thing they had to go through because they couldn't get signatures to get on the ballot. Well. If, if the board agrees to put something on the ballot, you don't need to get signatures. If you want them, if you're not agreeing to put it on, they have to get signatures. Right. That those are the only two options. Right. Okay. So what they're asking is, is the board willing to agree to put their warrant article on as a selectman's warrant article? And I'm not sure you're ready to do that so until you know where the finances are. I think the right. answer is maybe. Maybe. And um, it will depend upon a lot that happens late into the budget process. Right. But I would recommend that if you get into December and we've got a big second spike, you may want to consider putting on articles that you are, uh, that are, always pass and that are regularly there that you want to go on without requiring signatures. Right, but I would think that we would request a request. Right. Instead of just... Oh, yes. Just like that. That. We still want right. their warrant article. Their but... warrant article request, and then we would make a decision whether or not we're going to go get 25 votes or... Right, we put up one more representative right, column. And... We'll put it on for you. Yeah, yeah. yeah I... Other places that I've been always make make a request and usually give statistics on how many they're helping and right. 
some of those things for information right. that uh, supports the request. Yep. Okay, so it's a uh, maybe, but at least uh, at least a request and decision later on whether they need to uh, whether whether the board will put it on directly. Uh, so that's the only thing I had. I got a couple of non-public, but okay. that's all I had in public. Okay. Can I ask a couple? Do we know when the streetlights are going? I guess they're here, but do we know when they're... They're in the cellar, and I don't know when they're... I mean, at least they're making progress. They got them this far. And do we have any update on the solar fields? I haven't recently, no. Have you received anything on the solar fields from I the company? So. No. I, I, I know that come... December, they'll have to give us some more money. <laughs> Whether they've got panels there or not. Um, no, I, I know, last I knew it was they were in negotiations with ISO and with Eversource to figure out what the cost of the uh, fees would be for engineering what they needed to do. I think they were up in the $20,000 category for that. I just wondered, we hadn't heard anything. Yeah. I, I, will, I, will reach out, I will reach out to them and see where they stand. Okay. Uh, moving on, we have a Selectman's Minutes for a motion to approve Selectman's Minutes for July 23rd. And oh, you want to do them both together? And July 30th. Second. Any questions, errors, admissions? Seeing none, all those in favor, roll call vote. Street of yes. Record yes. Mason yes, Whitson yes. Burnham yes, passes unanimously. <coughs> Next. Oh, back up. See, that's why I said separately. I well, can't, I can't approve the 30th, the 30th because I will oh, abstain from the 30th. No, you, you can vote you even can vote though you were You can vote even though you weren't there. You're a slack one. Um, <laughs> next would be the Selectman's non public minutes for July 23rd, <laughs> session 1A, RSA 91A32A. Motion to approve. Second. Questions? All those in favor? Street a yes. Breaker yes. Mason yes. Goodson yes. Burnham yes. Passed unanimously. The next would may be... I, may I suggest it be treated like a consent agenda and you, and you uh, just mention all the remaining non-public minutes for one vote? I can't do the 30th because oh, it's it, Yeah, okay. Or you could do it all for the 23rd and all for the 23rd. I make a motion we approve the non-public minutes from July 23rd from sessions 1C and from session 2. Set out 1B. Yeah. And, and 1B. We didn't do 1C and 2. Second. Second. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. All, any questions? All those in favor? Street roll yes. Call. Rigor, yes. Mason, yes. Goodson, yes. Burnham, yes. Passed unanimously. Next will be non-public minutes for July 30th, Session 1A, Session 1B, and Session 1C. Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? And these minutes are sealed. Vote. Vote. Rita, yes. Rigor, yes. Mason abstains. It's a yes. Firm yes. Passes four, one abstention. Next we have, and I'll try and get this in the right order this time. <laughs> Just don't give me heart though. We have the accounts payable manifest in the amount of $37,718.03. Combined cash used to date, five million. $882,593.19. Motion to approve. Second. Questions? Comments? 
All those in favor? Streety, yes. Breaker, yes. Mason, yes. Cutson, yes. Barnum, yes. Passes unanimously. Payroll manifest in the amount of $23,309.78. Motion to approve. Second. Any questions, comments? Willie, can you repeat that number for me, please? Certainly. $23,309.78. Thank you. Roll call vote. Judy, yes. Brig, yes. Mason, yes. Goodson, yes. Farnham, yes. Passes unanimous. <coughs> Next, we have is a certificate of yield tax to be assessed on map 217, lot 21 in the amount of $524.37. Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor, roll call vote. Treaty, yes. Breaker, yes. Mason, yes. Mason, yes. Barnum, yes. Passes unanimously. Next, we have a notice of an intent to cut wood or timber for map 412, lot 37. Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Streeter, yes. Regular, yes. Mason, yes. Goodson, yes. Pardon me, yes. Passes unanimously. Selectman update. I will. <laughs> um, I spoke with Richard Roberts this morning. Uh, there is a tree on the lawn at the townhouse that has died. And um, he went down and looked at it and he feels that they can take it down. The tree next to it is on its way out too. Um, if that's something we take down both trees down there, I mean, I think next year that tree's going to be just as bad as this one. Did Richard think he could take that one too? It's got some wires with it that he would want to have public service. The wires are growing into the... <coughs> Tree or the trees growing into the wild. Oh, the public service probably wants that tree down anyway. Or at least some limbs. Right. Well, that's right. Yeah. Um, I would like us to have somebody look at that other tree and see if it's savable. You take both those trees down, that's going to be horrible. Right. It's got a lot of holes in the bark, like this one yeah. started, and there's a lot of. Like sap sucker or like rot? No, there's no. some pests that are getting them. I mean, there was there's several of them down along through Main Street here that have, have succumbed to it. And I don't know whether it's a Dutch elm disease or what it is. Well, that's what I was going to say. I, if you look out our back door here, the one branch of the <coughs> group out there is looking just like that one down there. So if you have one look at that one, you better have them look at this one as well. Are you talking the one? between the building and the walkway, or are you talking? The one that's right next to the nurse's door, the farthest branch of it coming off is looking the exact same way as that tree is down there with the leaves up on top when you look at it. You so you may, may want, want to have them look at that one as well. You may want to get a real arborist to come and look at it rather than somebody who's just taking them down. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm wondering if that tree down there could be saved. Well, well maybe we should contact UNH and see right. if one of their people can come yeah. up and take a look yeah. at it. Contact UNH and see if one of their people can come up and take a look at that one uh, and the one at the back door. It must be a county door. forester at yeah. Carroll County. But so take down at least that first At least the one. first yeah. one. That's yeah. yeah. okay. yeah. Before it falls down on somebody. I would contact Wendy Stricker. Yep. Wendy Stricker. Yep. Um, yep. The only other thing is we've... Um, hit the 30 person mark for the Monday luncheon. Everybody's very happy with that and um, we'll keep going. We put up the thingies in here. Oh, that's right. Aaron and I mm -hmm. put up all the hand sanitizers, the touchless hand sanitizers. So. And you have cord covers that you can put up now. <gasps> Ooh. <laughs> We're moving up in the world. Yeah. <laughs> so nobody grabs them, trips on them, you know. Well, you can, you can run them off batteries. No, I know, but we got the cord things, and we got batteries too in case Put one in the town house too. Well, right. I got the batteries today too. The one down there. For that yeah. down there. That's it for me. That's all I did. Help you okay. with that. <laughs> she took over your thunder. That's all right. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs>
It's all good. Uh, a couple things. I have our active bank account statements. Is it getting bigger? No. Oh. <laughs> um, the funds available as of today, which included taking the present AP out, is $3,230,715. Out of that, we still have four months' worth of school payments and four months' worth of ambulance payments and four months' worth of five months. Does that miscount? No, miscount. All right. So we're still looking about it's two twenty five instead of two fifty, so we're looking at four fifty a month for four months two fifty. Four fifty a month for two yeah. months. And eighty thousand to the uh, twenty thousand to the visiting nurse yet. Forty seven thousand to the library, I believe. I gotta look the library one up again. And nineteen thousand a month for ambulance service. And, and payroll of uh, about thirty thousand a month. Well, give or take. Give or take. So that's one thing. So on that note, do we want to advertise for budget committee members this year? I have not put it up yet, but we are looking at budget and we're trying. And we've been asked about the budget committee and if we were going to advertise, so I think now is the time to put it up. Certainly. Okay. I know we should. Extra eyes. I will put it up. <coughs> um, I don't know if you're aware, but if you're from Carroll County and anybody from Vermont comes to Carroll County, when they go back to Vermont, they have to self-quarantine for 14 days. Carroll County is considered a hot zone by Vermont, which the New Hampshire Department of Health, our neo group did not know anything about it. I sent it down, so they sent it up to figure out where this is coming from and how it's coming from. So um, as of this week, I believe, the state-ran testing facilities for COVID-19 will end. It should have been broadcasted over WMUR tonight. Uh, they will be placing all testing back into hospitals and physician offices, which again, uh, you will probably see a decrease of testing because I don't believe they're going to be free at hospitals and doctor's offices. Um, I do have a letter that I need to talk about under RSA 91A colon 3C dealing with a question of abatements on a person's property. Um, I think that's it. Oh, we have a sewer commissioner meeting, a sewer commissioner meeting coming up on the 18th if anybody's interested. <laughs> Well, I put some financial stuff for the sewer in your box, but I don't know if Glenn needs a copy of it or not. Tonight. I'm, I'm just wondering what you put in for financials. Mm -hmm. But I'll look. And I think that's it for me. Mm -hmm. Kelly? Um, I was able to attend the Albany Planning Board meeting on Tuesday. They invited me because they are looking over the state water ordinance right now, going um, line item by line item and sort of dissecting it. Um, it's going to be a long process <laughs> because they're only talking about like two sort of line items at a night. So I imagine this is going to go on for months. Um, but it is very informative. Um, there are copies of the state water ordinance um, available online. And um, I, don't, I really appreciated being invited to the meeting. I am going to encourage uh, Tamworth Planning Board to get more involved in looking into the water ordinance. And then I went to the Guilford Transfer Station today, which was really awesome. Um, so I think that those were my two main things as far as the actions that I did. I do think that I had some concerned citizens. Um, concerned citizens from Ferncroft contacted me um, about the major problem with overflow parking. I did inform them that that is technically Albany. <clears throat> um, they're concerned because, I mean, it is. It's a really sticky 
thing because they don't feel like, so Albany's covered by Conway cops. They really don't think that Conway is going to come to <laughs> Ferncroft to make sure that people are not <laughs> overflowing the parking, not parking on their private property. It is posted. They have signs saying private property, do not park here. They, um, they're concerned that there's no one to uphold it because they just don't feel like Conway's going to come. And they were wondering what I knew about Ferncroft in particular, if there's some sort of coverage that Tamworth and Conway agree to. I don't I don't know anything, but I just said I would bring it up at the meeting and see. And that's, that's called the Sheriff's Department. Okay. Or the state police. Yep. yep. I just didn't know if Tamworth had an agreement. Good answer. No. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's no problem. I think that's all I've got. Um, I received a call uh, from Doc Lowe. He was concerned about cars with out-of-state plates at the transfer station, and he wanted to know who was checking and who was enforcing the stickers. Um, he made some other comments, which I won't repeat. <coughs> I was surprised he called. He called me last week. Huh? He wrote something else. Um, and I received a complaint from Cleveland Hill Road and Bunker Hill Road area about the noise from CMI on Sunday on 8-2, about 3 p.m. And I could hear it at my house up on Great Hill as well. Um, the question I have is, um, I didn't take a ride by in a minute too, because one day, one day, a few weeks ago, not the second, because I don't remember hearing it the second, but I could have been inside too. Um, what day he runs his go-karts on? On 16th? Yeah, because they're lower and they're, cl no, they're lower and they're closer to the road. <laughs> it seems like the only days we're hearing it though is when we get those overcast days. I think the last time we had a complaint come in, it was a cloudy overcast day like that. Um, the other thing is I went down to the landfill because Eric Greenyard from HEB had said that our fence down there needed to be repaired and hope it could be done so he could report it was done. Um, frankly, I think he's being a little picky. Um, <laughs> you would have to still climb to get over the fence. The truck rail is bent and, and a tree landed on it. Richard fixed it. Um, you still have to climb over the fence to get inside. And both ends of the fence, it ends. Right. You could simply walk around the ends of the fence. So I don't <laughs> uh, and Richard Roberts, I think, had somebody come look at it when he repaired it to make it secure. Um, and they wanted like $800 yeah, to fix say, it. I thought that actually got voted through, to be honest with you, Willie. I, um, I went on Home Depot, I shouldn't give them an advertisement, but I'm going to, just because I did it. And I looked up the pipe, three, four sections of inch and a three eighths by ten foot, uh, twelve bucks each. Um, top style, dollar ninety-eight. Uh, galvanized post, sixteen bucks. Connectors for the pipe, nine bucks, and uh, some aluminum chain links. Total was eighty-four dollars and seventy-one cents. See if you go to Lowe's, I'm gonna give them a bunch. You can use my five percent off card and you can get them cheaper. <laughs> um, as much as I hate to say it, but if the board would vote to approve to reimburse me for whatever it costs to fix the fence. I would take care of it so that that's off the list. And the other thing is it needs to be mowed. Um, and I suspect that we could probably find somebody to mow it, Mark. I can ask. Um, ask the people in the mow it. So you, we're going to have to mow it even though the solar company... Oh, yeah. Okay. Until they... Until they until they take it. over. That's, that's, take I mean, because we had sort of planned on yeah, not having it mowed because of that. The so. thing is with the with a fence, they're probably going to have to put in a better fence than what's there. Right. And they're going to have to fence all the way right. around it. 
Oh, I don't have a problem. I just knew we had talked about mowing and they were going to, but they're not oh, they're, there, yeah, so it doesn't yeah, matter. We still have to do the environmental. Thing. I make a motion that we spend up to $100 to fix the chain link fence at the old landfill and authorize Willie Farnham to do that. And I make a motion that we have the, in addition to that motion, I make it, I add that we have the tra old transfer station mowed as needed this year. Second. Any further discussion? <coughs> All those in favor? Aye. Oh, three yes. Roll call. Yes. Roll call. Yes. Yes. Mason, yes. Gus, yes. Uh, Farnham, half abstain, half yes. <laughs> Just for fun. It passes unanimously. <laughs> you want to move, but you don't want to fix it. All right. <laughs> exactly. I was hoping you'd all say no. <laughs> Uh, Jim Diamond said that there are substantial fines for improper disposal of Freon I-22 and refrigerants containing Yeah, well, I assume so. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I hadn't, sorry, Jim, I didn't see that quicker. But, yeah. Okay. Um, just because I'll be nice here, is there any other public input? Yes. Linda. Uh, I'm going to make a motion that Budget committee, you guys have addressed the lights, street lights. You said you've addressed the solar. I always wanted to ask about that. Um, the town emails. I have sent emails to the different selectmen. Has that ever got fixed? So what? The emails for the town, like I sending them to selectmen. Emails from you. But I mean, in the past, I mean, I've sent like one to you, Willie, and I've never heard. Becky did get one. But I mean, I just wondered if that was ever addressed. Are you addressed. using our direct email or the contact email? The one that's on the website. The one that when you click on our name. I think so. On the yeah. Board but of I just I just didn't know if they work or not. The board of selectmen. If you go and click on the board of selectmen, and you go under that board of selectmen tab, <coughs> and you click on our names, that is our email. Yes, they're working. And, okay. And sometimes there's on our screens at home. <laughs> <laughs> They don't come, there's focused and then there's other. And then it goes, I get right. some, I have to check when we spam. check our own. When we check our own email, if it's not somebody routine, it goes into the other. Or spam. It's still yeah, it's, it's like a filter, so it doesn't really work quite well. And yes, they can't see that on their phones as well as they can on a computer. Oh, yeah. The contact form, we were having some issues with, but that's been straightened out. So if you put contact, okay. it will go to the contact person as well that's listed there. Okay. Um, and I wonder if you guys ever consider going to the townhouse to have the selections meeting, just so that there would be more people could be able to fit into the room. Um, and I, are you ever going to go back? I mean, it's been four and a half months with department heads. I've tried the Zoom and the Facebook Live. I live in a part of South Tam with that. We have no internet. I'm using my cell phone, and that's the only thing I have. There is no option. I mean, where I live. But I mean, I just think that the townhouse has a lot bigger room, and people could come. But I mean, the department heads, you guys haven't had come in for four and a half months. And just as a citizen to watch the meetings, I like to hear what their updates are, even if it's only twice a month. That's just we actually had discussed about having that department head just come in one at a time, you know. Like every, one, every one, week, have come one this week, one that. the next week, you know, so once a month we would go through the department heads. So I mean, I, I personally called Richard about the bridge because I wanted to know yeah. a heads up on what's going on because, I mean, it's yeah. an extra 10 minutes for me to come to town every time. We so. can start next meeting bringing them in. But I just, I mean, it, it's been four and a half months. You haven't had them in. I, Dana wow. has come in one or two, two times, yeah. and that's it. But I mean, I think it's important that the citizens know what's going on. Um, and the other thing I have is um, I want to share my thoughts on a project being done in a town building. And I hope you take time to review this information and visit the building so we can all work for a satisfactory outcome. And if you want to pass those around, there's some information. Which department head would you like to try to get next week? Well, yeah, it would be probably Richard. I 
Yeah, probably yeah. next week. Probably wouldn't be the best. Right, probably the 20th. Yeah, the 20th. Then, <laughs> the 20th and with Richard yep. because... Yeah, I'll ask Richard to come in the 20th. Between the rains, the tropical storm, the down trees and stuff, he's probably the better one to start with. Yeah. Hey, why wouldn't you have it at the townhouse just so there is no room? Because if we need something out of the office, Somebody's got to stop what they're doing and run back up here. We've had a couple times where we've had to go into the office to get something to clarify, and that's the only reason. I mean, my personally, myself, I would rather be at every meeting than trying to... I, all I can do at home is watch that thing spin constantly, nonstop. Well, before we go on, I just want to make sure that everybody knows, next week agenda, if we're starting late, we'll keep it smaller, but we're doing the um, traffic and roads policy and summer cottage roads because we haven't had a public hearing for that. So that will be one of our main things on next, next week's week. agenda because we're going to start late. We've got to get that out of the way so we can advertise for the public hearing and yeah. everything like that. And all the changes, the updates from the last meeting have been... I, if you send it, I can try and dig through, or you can try and dig through. I found some changes. I don't know that they've all there. Because I don't think anything was touched. What The policy I pulled up in the computer, nothing had been touched. I made changes according to my notes. You've got notes. We can put those changes in and send it out to everybody. That would be the best thing if we could. And I mean, I'll have a a section to submit on the road closures and we also need to put in some verbiage there which I think there may be already about the use of these roads for snowmobiles in the winter. Well we and did get the ro the two roads that are used by well, snowmobiles. Four, there's more than two. Well I talked to the no I I talked to the snowmobile club. There used to be, but the landowners were no longer letting them use them. He only gave them two names of two roads. Yeah, the snowmobile club. It should be what, Turkey Street? No, Turkey Street is across. Oh. You got Dixie Lane? Nope, Dixie Lane's across. They go down Dixie Lane, don't they? No, no. they go across. No, they go across the road. They go across at the corner of Dixie Lane, Lane, at the corner of Dixie Lane, they, they were diagonally right by the hill. When they come out of the state on the other side, when they go across the road, they go to, where do they go? They head out to White Lake. Yeah, but how do they get across Turkey Street? They stop at the corner of Dixie Lane. They don't go down there. And they cross right at the Street. hill on the curve right over to the gate. I know where the crossing is, but I mean, so how do they get to the end of Dixie Lane? They come across private yeah, like property. It, they come across what used to be Hayford yeah, behind the Dixie red Lane's building all the here. way that way. It's okay, all... Okay, so this they cross Dixie Lane. I mean, Lane they might the cross like, that. If this was Dixie Lane, okay. the snowmobile okay. is right, all right parallel. Okay. No, it's, yeah, a, no yeah. it's right okay. parallel to it, okay. and then it just goes right into the I state. Because I don't even think they, cro they cross mm -hmm. next drive. I think no, it, go, it goes up, right. up behind, up up in the Barton's lot. Old Mail Road and... Road. Those are the only two that the Snow Machine Club gave me because they said the other ones that used to be used, the landowners wouldn't yeah, they them use them last year. Two years ago, yeah. he said. So, and those are the Class 5 roads. Mm -hmm. What about Class 6 roads? He said those are the only two roads that the Snow Machines use that would be considered town roads. 
both okay. him and Jim Bowles. So I figured between the two of them, they're the ones that maintain trails. So yeah, I can't think of. I mean, do we occasionally see somebody skirting up from one house to the other up the street? Yeah. Well, no, but I mean, but it's crossing My now. more concern is the writing about the ORVs because there are ORVs that are allowed on the road. Yeah. That's the big thing that if you deck your ORV out and get it registered, and it, but it's only on certain mile an hour road. Right. I mean. Because the, I it's do gonna know. It's going to be, what, 45 and under or something? I think, I, yeah. And there are people that travel from Madison to Tamworth on roads that they take their ORV on, so. Yep. Well, it'll be fun. All right, so we'll do that next meeting. Becky, yep. you and I'll get together and look at, because I think I know there's a little. Well, no, I know there's a little handwritten stuff, but there's nothing that's been typed. Okay. But there's also a video of that. Yeah. Yep, yep. Government oversight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of that right. public hearing. So I we'll think. mush it together as best we can and get it out to you guys to review. Okay, great. Um, and I'll try and get the exact coordinates for the road closures for winter. I actually, if I may, I did have a little more to say as they signed off. I hope it didn't come across negatively on the TTS plans. I'm very grateful of your work. I do believe, speaking as a resident, uh, that we have a big job to do first, making residents appreciate that the TTS is an essential service and must be recognized. Thanks, uh, Jeff. I think if you can find that material, Jeff, that on the road, if we can actually find the file, the Summer Cottage RSA was in there. Because yeah, we had discussed it before. I mean, it, it's the exact location on the road. I want to pin it to a coordinate. So that oh, you're going to do the GPS 50,000 letter long so we can do that yep. if you can't. Okay. Then you'll know where it is. Okay, I won't because I don't understand that. But. <laughs> well, you'll know where it is when you drive there in the winter and you find it flying across the road. <laughs> so, um, okay, anything else before we go into the non public session? I make a motion we go into non-public session under RSA 91A to B, which will be session one, and we go into non-public session under RSA 91A 3 to C, which will be session number two. Second. Roll call vote. Speeding yes. Gregory yes. Mason yes. Person yes. Barnum yes. You have a specific. 807. 807. <laughs> It's the last time I ever drink a large coffee. Uh, make a motion we come out of non public session. Second. Roll call vote. Green yes. yes. 56. Mason yes. Goodson yes. Farm yes. Unanimous decision. The minutes from session one will be sealed due to the fact that they may affect the outcome, and the session two will not be sealed. So we need a vote on that. I'll make a motion that we seal session one under RSA 91A 32B. Second. Roll call vote. Street yes. Record yes. And that's under effect. Adversely, the reputation of any other person? No, no. it's ineffective. The, okay. it, it, it's, uh, let's, it, it makes the action taken ineffective. Okay. Good thing, yes. Mason, yes. Barnum, yes, unanimous. I think at 9.56, a motion for adjournment would be appropriate. Motion to adjourn. Second. Yes. I'm undebatable. Undebatable.